and welcome to our fourth Ascend 2.0 town hall meeting. Uh, this is our last one for the year before the launch of Bruin by uh, Plus, which we are really, really excited about. Um, we have a Q&A this afternoon or the, this morning that uh, we'll be doing later. So appreciate all questions. And um, we, again, as always, appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. Um, we have a very healthy agenda for you today. We're going to talk, obviously, about Bruin by Plus, which is coming up and launching on January the 2nd, some of the readiness activities and training opportunities that we have for all of you and your staff. Uh, Marsha Smith is going to talk to us about research representation and involvement. It's critical that we have input from campus as we do uh, all these activities. And then Bruin Finance, uh, Selena is going to talk about uh, fiscal management and boundary systems retrofit with Cameron uh, from IT. Our upcoming engagement opportunities, obviously, that we'll talk about. And then, as I said, I'll be hosting a question and answer session uh, at the end of our presentations. So uh, I think without further ado, uh, again, I must pass on message from our executive sponsors. They uh, appreciate all of our effort and all of the work that, uh, that you're all doing with us and are really, really looking forward to it. Um, you know, our launch coming up here in January. So uh without further ado uh, obviously timeline wise you know we are right getting ready for our brew and buy go live launch we continue our development and configuration work on oracle uh, and we are about just ready to start with train uh, you know end user training on october 30th and our train the trainer is uh going on currently right now so we're we're really um we're moving along on our timelines so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this, I think, over now to Janelle. Uh, good morning, Janelle and Michael. Morning. I am going to kick it to Michael as he's gonna kick go. us off with Broom by Plus. Yeah, let's start with this. Um, good morning, everyone. Michael Rupitz here, Associate Director of Accounts Payable. It's great to be here today to speak to you about UCLA's new procurement system, Broom by Plus. As Mark mentioned, Broom by Plus is launching in just a couple months on January 2nd. This new system will introduce a multitude of benefits to help UCLA step into the future of procurement. As with any transition, there'll be several important changes in the upcoming weeks. And my colleagues on the procurement team and I are here today to speak about some of these key changes and how you can prepare. So we are right now at non-procurement transaction, and I'd like to begin by spending a few minutes discussing that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about, you can see from the matrix here, non-procurement -tra transactions. These are formally called specialty payments, and they're managed outside the typical payment process. Historically, the payment types listed here have been managed in brew and buy. The payment types will be, or in some cases, have already been transitioned to other systems. With the transition to Bruin by Plus in January 2024, some of these payments will be moved into Bruin by Plus and managed by Central Procurement. In other cases, payment types will be managed by different organizations within different systems, such as Concur, UCPath, etc. Please note this list of payments is not comprehens a comprehensive list of all non-procurement transaction payment types, but rather just those that have historically been managed by Bruin by. Okay, non-procurement transactions payment works. All vendors, including new vendors, vendors involved in non-procurement transactions and existing UCLA vendors need to be registered in payment works. UCLA's vendor management tool that houses vendor contact information and other credit critical vendor details. Vendor management team is working with all the new vendors and non-procurement transaction vendors to assist with vendor onboarding. The team can be reached at vendormanagement at finance.ucla.edu. Existing vendors not yet registered in payment work should contact their vendor onboarding specialist at that same email address. Please note that payment works registration is required for non-procurement transactions. Vendors having payment types managed in Bruin by Plus specifically. Vendors handling payment types managed in other systems may or not may or may not be required to register in payment works. Invoice submission and approval process. Now let's shift gears to discuss the new invoice submission and approval process that will be introduced as part of the transition to Bruin by Plus. 
So beginning January 2nd, the way that invoices are processed and received is changing. Before we dive into what those changes are, I'd like to contextualize invoicing within the greater procurement life cycle, which is what we call the six steps shown here. You have shopping, requisition, you have purchase order, there's receipt, invoice processing, and finally payment. Vendors send UCLA invoices to request payment for goods and services provided. Many invoices can be matched to a purchase order to compare against what was ordered and received. In the case of non-procurement transactions, which do not require POs, payees or vendors send invoices or any supporting documentation based on the goods or services provided. These invoices don't match to a PO in Broom by Plus. Invoices with matching exceptions will be reviewed by AP or accounts payable, commonly called AP. The vast majority of invoices will not hit match exception workflow step and will be sent straight on for payment. Our goal is for the majority of invoices to quickly move through the system without AP requiring any review, allowing for expedient processing. All right, we're getting the last two slides here. As I mentioned, the way in which UCLA processes and receives invoices is changing as part of the transition to Bruin by Plus. Over the past few weeks, Bruin by users and UCLA vendors have been informed of the new PO invoice submission process outlined here. Currently, POs are sent manually to vendors who submit their invoices via Transceptor or UCLA's invoice transmission site. Then AP manually records the invoice information. With the transition to Broom by Plus, several steps in the process will be automated. For instance, rather than manually sending POs to vendors, Broom by Plus will automatically email to the appropriate vendor, pulling their email address straight from PaymentWorks. Then the vendor sends their invoice to a centralized email address. This new email address will be shared with campus in the coming weeks prior to go live. Once the invoice is received, the system captures the invoice, which is then linked to the corresponding PO and managed by Accounts Payable. Finally, Accounts Payable, or AP, audits only the invoices that hit matching exception. If there are no discrepancies identified in the review step, then the invoice pays. If the invoice does not hit matching exception, the invoice will skip the audit step and be routed directly for payment. And finally, the subaward subcontract invoice approval process. This process, the process for reviewing and approving subaward subcontract invoices, is a little bit different than the process we reviewed on the last slide. Once the invoice is received, AP can review and approve the invoice. That's step one in the process you see here. Next, the subaward contract invoice routes to the PIs and fund managers. Both the PI and the fund manager must review and approve the invoice through the, though the order does not matter. Once the PI and fund manager approve the invoice, it may route to additional workflow approval steps if needed, then it routes to AP for payment. This new process will help UCLA obtain PI and fund manager approval in a timely manner and maintain compliance with uniform guidance. It also provides transparency and transactional history so anyone can see where this invoice is within any given workflow step. Next, I'll pass the mic back over to my colleague, Janelle Venizzi, who will take us through the next topic. Thank you, Michael. <clears throat> Good morning, everybody. Happy to be here. My name is Janelle Vinci, and I am the P2P Workstream Manager on the Ascend 2.0 project. I am also my day job, the Associate Director of Campus Purchasing. During the Bruin by closure, the procurement team will systematically migrate select purchase orders from Bruin by into Bruin by Plus. Let's spend a few minutes discussing what this process will look like. So we have a slide up here. We've got a column on the left and a column on the right. The column on the left is to decide or to distinguish what will move over. So not all purchase orders or POs will migrate to the new system. Our team has established clear criteria to guide the PO migration effort, and this criteria is listed on the screen. Please note that POs are moved to Bruin by Plus. If they're moved over through migration, they will have their legacy Bruin by purchase order number with them in the new system. And the purpose of that is to allow invoices to come into Bruin by Plus and match against those legacy POs. So let's talk through what this migration activity looks like. 
first, purchase orders will systematically be migrated to Broom by Plus prior to go live based off of the defined criteria in the previous slide. Then the POs that have been migrated to Broom by Plus will be closed in Broom by. Encumbrances for migrated POs will then be released and this process will continue to repeat as hold and incomplete invoices are cleared against POs that meet the PO migration criteria. At the end of the year, Broom by POs that did not meet the criteria to be migrated to Broom by Plus will be closed and the encumbrance for these POs will be released. All unmigrated POs will need to be recreated in the new system. So how can you help? As we prepare for the migration, please review the PaymentWorks roster and contact vendors at finance.ucla.edu if you notice that any vendor you work with is not on this list. Vendors onboarding specialists will assist with the vendors with PaymentWorks registration. We're also asking for your assistance in resolving H&I invoices. POs with open H&I invoices cannot be migrated. So help us in facilitating this timely PO migration effort. Help us help you actually. <laughs> and help clear out those H&I invoices. Check your invoices and resolve any that are on hold or incomplete. The H&I Resolution Initiative webpage linked here contains more information on how to resolve H&Is. Please complete these activities prior to December 14th. Okay. Next, let's talk about Broom by Closure and the process for handling high priority purchase orders that will be in place during this time frame. In late December, we prepare for the transition to Broom by Plus. The team will complete a series of what we're calling cutover activities, which involve migrating certain data from the old system into the new system. In order to complete cutover activities, the legacy procurement system room by will be on freeze from December 14th at 8 p.m. until the day before go live, New Year's Day, January 1st, 2024. December 14th is the very last day that campus can transact in room by. Beginning December 14th at 8 p.m., only central procurement will be able to access room by to clear out any residual transactions. Maxima will also be frozen during the broom by closure. Please, please, if you can, plan accordingly. If you are able, submit your POs before December 14th. This information will be incorporated into UCLA's Winter Holiday Closures official memo. For specific cases, an emergency PO process will be in place. So let's talk through this. Certain transactions or events that could potentially interrupt research and or cause damage to UCLA if left unpaid should be handled using what we're calling the emergency PO process. This emergency PO process should only be used from December 14th through January 1st. If you have a transaction that you believe falls into this category of an emergency, you should follow the steps listed here to request the creation of emergency PO. A communication will be sent to current Broom by users outlining this process in more specific detail in the coming weeks. Again, if you have any questions related to the emergency PO process, please contact ascend2 at ucla.edu. I will now hand it over to Jennifer Ferry to talk about Broom by Plus training. Thank you so much, Janelle. My name is Jennifer Ferry, ACIO of Strategy Planning and Operations at IT Services. I'm also an Ascend 2.0 program owner. Uh, to prepare for the launch of our new Procure-to-Pay system, many of you will need to take training. I'll spend the next few minutes talking about the training process as well as the courses that will be offered. And then we'll share a short demo of Brune Learn, the site that will house all of our Brune by Plus training resources. Each of the roles that you see here are expected to complete customized targeted training that cover Broom by Plus processes and policies relevant to their role. Moving from left to right, you'll see that campus buyers will take a six hour long live virtual instructor led course. PAN reviewers will complete a brief e-learning 
that addresses how to access the PAN Reviewer dashboard in the new system. PIs and fund managers will each complete a brief 45-minute e-learning. And finally, on the far right-hand side of this slide, you'll see that our central procurement and central department approvers will attend training specific to their unit as well. Like campus buyers, these roles will need to complete a virtual instructor-led course that will be offered via Zoom that addresses the different phases of the procurement life cycle with an emphasis on those that are most relevant to their role as part of this centralized unit. All roles are encouraged to familiarize themselves with the system by completing a brief e-learning titled Introduction to Broom by Plus before completing their role-specific courses. Now let's take a look at this high-level timeline. Since June, uh, the program's training team has been very hard at work at developing training materials to ensure that all of our future Broom by Plus users are prepared to effectively navigate and use the system on day one. This month, the team has started outreach uh, to conduct targeted uh, communications to users that are holding roles that require training. So all of you that are in scope for this Go Live should have received a communication from Ascend 2.0 with an outline of the training that has been designed for you in your specific role. All roles will take on-demand web-based e-learning in some capacity. In addition to these introductory e-learning courses, campus buyers and members of central procurement will complete live instructor-led classes on June on Zoom, and while PAN reviewers, uh, PIs, and fund managers will complete additional role-specific e-learning courses, as we mentioned on the previous slide. After completing your training, folks have the opportunity to attend office hours to get any additional questions answered with our subject matter experts. Then on June, uh, January 2nd, 2024, the system will launch and future Broom by Plus users will begin to transact in the system. Note, as mentioned earlier, that all training materials will be accessible on Broom Learn after Go Live to refer back to once you are currently operating in the system. This includes all of the e-learnings as well as recorded versions of the instructor-led courses. Okay, training expectations. If you fall into any of the roles that we've been discussing, please keep in mind that the training is required. You must complete training prior to system launch and your training completion will be tracked on a weekly basis and reported to school and unit leadership. Please also keep in mind that the time needed to complete training activities varies greatly depending on your role. While PAN reviewers, PIs, fund managers should allot about an hour to complete their web-based training, campus buyers and central procurement will need to allot additional time to complete their required training. Central procurement users who require training will be receiving calendar holds for training in late November. Lastly, the training team has worked extremely hard to make accessing and completing required training activities simple and straightforward. As a result, you do not need to enroll in any of your e-learning courses. You've already been, if those are your training requirements, pre-enrolled in those courses in Bruin Learn. That said, for every course that has an instructor-led component, as mentioned, that's your buyer and or uh, central procurement, Multiple Zoom sessions will be offered, so you will need to register for the specific Zoom session that you would like to attend. Instructions on how to complete registration have all been sent via email. These instructions are also posted clearly on Bruin Learn, the learning management system where all training materials will be hosted. So with that, let's take a closer look at the Bruin Learn website. As mentioned, all of our Broom by Plus training materials will be hosted 
on a secure and easy to use learning management system called Bruin Learn. This is used university wide. Bruin Learn is accessible to all UCLA employees with a valid UCLA logon. It is organized by role to make it easy to find information you need and is comprehensive. So everything you need to complete training is housed in one convenient location. To get a clear sense on what Bruin Learn is and how you can leverage this site to complete your Bruin Buy Plus training, let's take a step back, relax, and enjoy a brief demo of the Bruin Learn site. Welcome to Bruin Learn, your one-stop shop for all things Bruin Buy Plus training. We hope this short demo helps you familiarize yourself with the different features and functionality of the site. Before we dive into the site itself, let's take a moment to talk about Bruin Learn. Bruin Learn is UCLA's learning management system that will host the role-specific training you need to prepare for the launch of Bruin by Plus, UCLA's new procure-to-pay system. It is comprehensive, meaning that all your resources are housed in one convenient location. It is also role-based, which makes it easy to find the resources and support that you need without getting bogged down by other material that isn't relevant to you. Bruin Learn is secure. All training will be protected behind UCLA's single sign-on or SSO. This means that only UCLA employees with a UID logon can access the site to keep our procurement processes protected. There are several ways to access your role-specific training on Bruin Learn. For one, each individual who holds a role that requires training will receive a series of emails throughout the month of October 2023. These communications include direct links to required trainings. Another easy way to access Bruin Learn is through the Ascend 2.0 website. Simply type ascend.ucla.edu into your web browser. Navigate to the Bruin by Plus training webpage. This page will have a link that will take you to Bruin Learn. From here, you can select the page aligned to your role to access your training material. Next, let's look at what training resources are included on each role-specific course page. Keep in mind that the types of materials and training delivery model varies depending on your role. For example, a PAN reviewer's training will look different than a campus buyer's in terms of delivery type, content, and time required for training. Individuals will be pre-enrolled in role-specific courses based on their job code. Let's use the Campus Buyer course as an example. Once you arrive at the Campus Buyer course page using one of the methods for accessing the site discussed earlier, you will see an introduction at the top of the page. This introduction provides high-level details about the training modalities that will be leveraged, for example, instructor-led facilitation, simulations, and practice sessions. As you scroll down the page, there will be an option to register for an instructor-led session. Again, keep in mind that not all roles require instructor-led sessions. Some will only take on-demand e-learning followed by an assessment and won't require Zoom registration. Each of these sessions are capped at 50 seats, so please register early to attend the training that works best with your schedule. Identify the course you want to attend, then click Register. This will bring you to the Zoom registration page. The registration form will be pre-filled with your name and work email. Verify that the correct UCLA work email is entered, then click the register button at the bottom. Shortly thereafter, you will receive a Zoom-generated confirmation email that will allow you to add the Zoom session to your Outlook calendar. At that point, you will be all set up for your instructor-led course. You may also find prerequisite course materials on this page, like the Introduction to Bruin by Plus course. We recommend completing this e-learning course prior to the instructor-led session. These contain quick knowledge checks in each module to quiz your understanding of the material. On the day of your scheduled instructor-led training, join your Zoom session and plan to allot your entire day to your facilitator. At the end of your instructor-led course, your instructor will provide a link to the final assessment in the Zoom chat. You must complete the assessment to get credit for taking the course. Once you complete the assessment, you can find your score within the Grades tab. You will see 100% in your grade book no matter the score, as long as you complete the assessment with 80% or higher. 
If you have any questions about the site, you can always reach out to the Ascend 2.0 program team by emailing the Send2 at ucla.edu. Happy training. All right, thank you so much. And with that, I'll pass it over to Marcia Smith, who will talk to us about research. Thank you, Jennifer. I'm happy to be here to talk about Ascend 2.0 for research. Um, good morning uh, to all. My name is Marcia Smith, and I'm the Associate Vice Chancellor for Re Research Administration at UCLA and a program owner for the Ascend 2.0 for research project. It is one of our top priorities to involve members of the UCLA research community in the design and implementation of Ascend 2.0 for research. I will review some of the mechanisms we've put in place to engage the research community and to share in order to share their various perspectives. Uh, this shows um, several of those work groups. Um, understanding the size and scope of UCLA's research program, it's critical that the Ascend 2.0 program develop systems and business processes that meet the needs of the research community. To better understand the perspective of UCLA's PIs, research administrators, and fund managers, the Ascend 2.0 research team uses the Research Advisory Committee, the Standing Research Administration Forum, um, we formed a research reporting subcommittee, and uh, we have various demonstrations of ascend research functionality and gather feedback from our community members. Um, we're currently forming a researcher focus group to uh, engage principal investigators uh, in important decisions about how the program works for them. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the purpose in, of each of these groups. The Research Advisory Committee is a group of 13 research leaders from organizations across campus. These members were selected by our research team um, and our program leaders because they have specific expertise and knowledge of, research, of the research uh, administration needs relative to contract and grant financial operations which Ascend 2.0 is designed to support. The committee was established in January, 2023, shortly after the program, the Ascend program's inception. This committee is kept up to date on important upcoming changes and the progress of design and testing. And uh, we gather their input on a variety of program milestones to help um, our team make informed decisions. Um, the Research Administration Forum is a standing, uh, oops, sorry, is a standing monthly meeting hosted by ORA to discuss new and change policies and procedures in research administration. Um, monthly, we have 300 or so attendees at this meeting, and it's an excellent um mechanism for getting out information about um, Ascend 2.0. So uh, we've added Ascend 2.0 to every draft agenda beginning in early 2023 in order to um, enable that broad communication of the program goals and status and to solicit feedback from a large segment of the campus research administration community. The Research Administration Forum meetings are held on Zoom and the links are accessible on the ORA website. Use the link at the bottom of this slide to learn more about the forum and access past meeting slides and agendas and join upcoming meetings. If you're a research administrator and not aware of the forum, um, we strongly encourage you to um, click this link and start to participate. Um, the Research Reporting Committee is a spinoff from the Campus Reporting Work Group um, to focus particularly on the kinds of reports research administrators need to support their PIs. Um, 
we will uh, we identify, prioritize, and design uh, reports for campus use. This is in addition to reports used by our central extramural fund management group and um, their their shared interests are also represented on this committee. Um, we met on a weekly basis between April and July of this year to identify and prioritize the most important reports that members of the community will use once um, Bruin Finance launches in December and of course when Ascend 2.0 launches um, in January 2025. Since July, each member of our committee has been assigned to a subset of these reports to help identify the business requirements needed to develop them. Um, and of course, the uh, functionality uh, requirements of the reports. Um, this group is responsible for the actual development of reports, um, the financial um, reporting and business analytics team has already begun to build out several of these reports based on the business requirements. Once these reports are in finalized enough, uh, finalized form, the team will share them with members of the subcommittee for feedback to make sure the reports are intuitive and useful to members of our research community. We are also um, using demonstrations of Ascend Point 2.0 uh, for research functionality. Um, the research team organizes and facilitates uh, demonstrations um, uh, at various points uh, of time in the project plan. These recorded demonstrations of functionalities allow the campus uh, subject matter experts and stakeholders to provide feedback on system design. Um, while folks are invited to participate, our select members of the research community who have been identified as individuals with rel relevant expertise, any member of the research community can get involved. Visit the research webpage linked at the bottom of this page to um, get information about how to in get involved in these meetings. Um, there's a feedback survey available there too, and um, feel free to share your input because the survey is anonymous and um, you can identify yourself if you want to. And finally, the researcher focus group. This is a group that we're currently in the process of convening to engage uh, principal investigators in specific um, areas that will be of interest to them. The Ascend 2.0 implementation impacts or affects all of the research administration systems that are currently deployed to campus. And it provides an opportunity for us to uh, make updates to those systems um, as we make required updates to those systems. And so we wanna hear from PIs about um, how we can better provide information that is important to them. Um, so with that, I am going to turn the meeting over to our next speaker for Bruin Finance, Selena Martin. Thank you, Marcia. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Selena Martin. I'm the campus controller at UCLA and also an Ascend 2.0 program owner. Um, so today I'd like to talk about what we're doing in this project that will help you to be better financial stewards at the university. The changes that we're making and the tools that we're building that are all in support of strong fiscal management. So in about 15 months, we're gonna go live with Bruin Finance. This is our new core financial system that's powered by Oracle Financials Cloud. Uh, our goal is to get to a level of financial transformation that allows for stronger fiscal management across campus. And if we're expecting a higher level of fiscal management from you, then everything that we're doing on this project should be in support of allowing you to do exactly that. So what are we doing? Um, so let's take a look at this slide here in the four pillars. So first, we're establishing a standardized accounting structure. This is our new chart of accounts, which we've talked about in past town halls. It's gonna standardize how we capture transactions and improve accounting practices across the institution. 
Now this new chart of accounts is gonna replace our current accounting chart string, which is called the FAU, by introducing a more dynamic common language that still leaves room for some local flexibility because we know our diverse units have unique needs. To date, you have helped us to map more than 2 million FAU combinations and our gratitude goes out to the mapping experts who continue to devote time to this effort each month. The second pillar, um, in the second pillar, we our new system will allow you to have more timely and accurate information. So we have a team, and Marsha um, talked about this, we have a team called the Financial Reporting and Business Analytics Team um, that has been engaging with campus stakeholders to make sure that we have a reporting suite and structure that empowers you by providing useful, understandable, and actionable information. Um, and of course, we'll share much more details on this in the future. Third, we're working to build controls into our processes, but in a way that's gonna minimize inefficiency and delays. For example, the transition to Bruin Finance is gonna allow you to have greater visibility through end-to-end -end workflow. We've heard your concerns about potential delays caused by automated workflows and are committed to identifying a reasonable number of well-positioned individuals to improve transactions in meaningful ways. And then finally, we're integrating financial and operational data in the new data lake house with modern tools for reporting on that data. And this means that you can access and analyze financial data, vendor data, and UC path payroll data in one place. This eliminates the need to pull data from various systems, allowing you to spend less time getting the data and more time analyzing it to make the decisions that you need to for your business. You'll hear us talk more about these four pillars in the future. Our goal is to provide as much support as possible in our collective <laughs> effort for stronger financial, for stronger fiscal management. So we're gonna do this um, in the ways that I've just described, but also by providing overarching training on these new tools, the underlying processes, and even the foundational concepts of fiscal management. So thank you for your time today. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to my colleague, Cameron Carside, who's gonna to speak to you about retrofitting UCLA's existing systems. Oh, you're on mute, Cameron. All right, thank you. Thank you, Selena. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Cameron Carzad. I'm the Interim Director of IT Services, Application Services and also an SN 2.0 program owner. I'm excited to be here with you all today to talk about the existing UCLA system used by departments across the university or how and how they're retrofitting their system to our procurement and financial systems. Going to the next slide. To begin, let's share some baseline information about boundary systems, what it means to retrofit them and why retrofit is so important. Many of you are likely familiar with UC Path, PAMS, PATS, Transact, Lawson, our new Bruin by Plus right in the middle, and other systems you see here. These are the system UCLA relies on to transmit financial data. We call these system boundary systems as they lie on the boundary of UCLA's future core financial system, Bruin Finance. The program team grouped these boundary systems into two tiers. Tier one, boundary systems integrate or connect with Oracle directly, whereas tier two system connect with Bruin Finance indirectly. There are 28 tier one boundary systems and 76 tier two systems. All of these systems need to be modified to ensure they operate correctly with our new financial system, Bruin Finance, when it goes live in December, 2024. Retrofitting these systems will require development, integration, new reports, new processes, et cetera. The Ascent 2.0 program is relying heavily on boundary system retrofit teams across campus to proactively work to retrofit their systems to align with the Ascend program. And in, in the grand scheme of things, retrofitting plays a pivotal role in guaranteeing the seamless compatibility of Bruin Finance Within, within UCLA's extensive ecosystem. 
by meticulously integrating and adapting boundary systems to align with Bruin Finance, we can greatly enhance the ease with which end users embrace the new system, ultimately helping UCLA complete their transformative, transformative journey. All right, since the beginning, since the program's inception, the technical team has been working in collaboration with boundary system teams to help facilitate the retrofit effort. To date, the technical team and boundary systems teams have analyzed the systems and participated in remediation workshops to align on retrofit expectations. Over the past several months, boundary systems teams have been designing their retrofits and project plans to prepare for the building the, their system retrofits. Boundary system teams are giving from May 23 to March 24 to build their retrofit and prepare their systems for end-to-end -end testing, at which point the boundary system retrofit teams will test their retrofit and make adjustments as needed. The design, build, and internal testing phase we are, we are in today may seem like a very long phase, but we are approximately halfway through already. Delays in retrofit builds have the potential to delay overall launch of room finance. So we cannot emphasize enough how critical boundary system retrofit is to the success of Ascend 2.0. The technical team has heard feedbacks provided by our boundary systems, and the project teams are addressing these concerns to prevent retrofit delays. Thank you to our boundary system retrofit teams for all the work you have put in up to this point, and let's keep up the momentum. Looking forward, the boundary systems retrofit will be tested both internally and by end users from spring 24 through fall 24. Then end users will train on the changes to boundary systems that result from the retrofitting that to Oracle. Finally, Bruin Finance will launch in December 24, and the program team will provide ongoing support to both boundary system teams and the campus stakeholders who use the systems. Going to the next slide, on this last slide, I will talk about boundary system support. You may be wondering who, what kind of support are the owners of each systems receiving from SN 2.0? Both tier one and tier two systems meet regularly with the technical team. The frequency varies depending on the size of the system and the scope of the effort. During these regular check-ins, the technical team answer boundary systems retrofit teams questions, gather feedback on integration concerns and blockers, provide feedback on project plans and DSDs, which is our design specification documents, and share important information related to chart of accounts mapping, financial integration hub architecture, which is our FIH, and other top of mind discussion topics. And that pretty much concludes our boundary systems retrofit section. Now I will pass it over to my colleague, Jennifer Ferry, to share a few ways you can get involved with SN 2.0 and stay informed of program happenings. Um, Jennifer, are you there? Good afternoon, yes. Good afternoon. So now we'll walk through the upcoming engagement opportunities that we have here with Ascend. As you can see, there are many ways to get involved and stay informed. Uh, from a getting engaged perspective, you'll see that we continuously offer uh, the opportunity for you to provide feedback through a survey. And we ask that uh, as a follow-up today's event, you'll, you'll provide us with any uh, questions, concerns, and or feedback that we can leverage uh, to provide ongoing support uh, to the community by completing a two-minute anonymous survey. Uh, by no later than October 27th. In addition, you'll also see that we offer office hours. Uh, so we encourage you to register for the next office hours that are going to be offered on November 7th uh, from 11 to 12.30 Pacific Standard Time. And then ongoing resources that we offer include uh, our Ascend 2.0 website. This is continuously refreshed 
with information about the program uh, in line with where we are with the overall timeline of the project. Uh, you receive monthly newsletters. And if by any chance you are not on that distribution, please email ascend2 at ucla.edu to be added to the mailing list. And lastly, we encourage you to check out our YouTube channel. And uh, this is where we provide ongoing updates with all of the recorded sessions that we have, uh, like the one that you're attending today. Okay, on the next slide. Uh, I'd like to now open it up. Uh, we'll be offering Q&A to the overall audience, and this will be facilitated by Mark. So Mark, I'll go ahead and pass this back over to you. Thank you very much, Jennifer, and thank you to all my colleagues for, for all the wonderful presentations and, and the materials and the um, that uh, that you have uh, talked to us about this morning. First question comes from Jean. Good morning, Jean. Is there a PDF of these webinar materials? This is my first town hall. First off, Jean, thank you so much for joining us. Jennifer, these, these materials are available on the, the Ascend 2.0 website, correct? Yes, they are. Very good, thank you. Tanya, good morning. Um, how will this work for vendors who do not have an email and know how to use a don't know how to use a computer? Yes, they still exist. Uh, that is true. They do. Um, does one of my colleagues like to try and, and answer that? Respond to it. So I'll ch I'll chime in real quick here. So in that case, uh, which would be pretty less common, but yes, they do exist. Communication directly with vendor management. We can they can work to find a great solution to make it happen. Okay, so we'll refer them to the vendor management group. Nancy asks, uh, when should we expect to start receiving updated reports with buyers and approvers that have completed the training? So Jennifer, I think you've got some reporting that we're gonna be doing from a training perspective, correct? That is correct. And those should start going out as early as the first week of training, which is expected to begin you know, uh, we're, our first week of training begins that October 30th, and then it will follow one week later. So we'll do everything in a one-week lag. Very good. Uh, Jeanette asks a couple of questions. First off, for POs automatically being sent to the email address associated with the vendor's payment works account, what about subawards? Do we need OCGA to send the POs? So I assume this will not apply to those. So let's take that question first. I can take that. Hi, Jeanette. Yeah, so the way that subcontracts and sub awards work, while Room by Plus will generate a purchase order number for those transactions, it will not automatically send the POs to those sub awardees um, or subcontractors. Instead, it will go first to OCGA if it's a sub award. They will then take their documents and contracts, put the PO number on there, and then manually send it to them. And then if it follows the research subcontract route, it will go to our contracts group within procurement. They will, again, do the same thing, create or complete the requisition. It will prepare a purchase order. It will not send out, but that team will then take their contract, put the PO number on the contract and manually send that contract out. So then they have control really of instructing where to send invoices. Very good. Thank you, Janelle. Appreciate it. I think there's a follow-up to that. Will the department contact be CC'd in this email that is automatically sent? We often need to forward to multiple contacts. You will not be CC'd, but in training coming up, you'll be able to see how to find copies of these POs and literally print them out if that's something you would like and to also receive a notification um, to direct you exactly to that PO within the system. Okay, thanks, Janelle. Uh, Mafalina, good morning. She asked the question, can we take the training twice? Mark, I can take that one. Sure, so relative to training, all of the e-learnings are going to be available on our, you know, Broom Learn website. Uh, please note that uh, those can be taken as many times as uh, participants wish to take them. And then as it relates to any of the instructor-led courses, we will be recording those and they will be available as well for individuals to take ongoing. Thank you, Jennifer. Mary asks, good morning, Mary. Uh, can the December 14th Bruin by cutoff date be communicated to campus partners as a standalone notice, as well as in the campus closure announcement? Some departments will need to prepare for end of year renewals, et cetera. And the information maybe get lost in the holiday message. That is such a great 
point, Mary. Thank you. So I know there's a communication going out that's very specific to the broom by cutoff dates. And in addition to that, the emergency PO process and what that looks like. And I know coming up, there will also be a very separate communication talking about the winter holiday closure message. Um, I know our website is going to host a bunch of information, but we are going to continue to talk about this in any other forum as well. So hopefully not to get everybody confused, but that is a great point. Okay, thank you. Uh, Veronica asks, when approximately will PIs be receiving email for their training on subaward invoice approval? Mark, all of the training notifications for our PIs and fund managers, we've sent out a letter or welcome letter in the past week. So all of those that are in scope have already received an initial notification and then we'll be following up with a notification with all of the individual links for those classes. Thank you. Um, Yvonne asks, if your quiz grade is lower than 80%, for whatever reason, will the user have to take the course again? Any, any takers? So relative to the course uh, evaluation, if they're saying if they, if they score less than 80%, is that what they're asking? Yes. My assumption is that uh, the trigger that's been set up within Broom Learn will ask them to resubmit the you know, evaluation similar to any of our you know, courses that we take across the university. So they'll be asked to uh, retake the assessment at the end of the course to ensure that they have kind of an understanding of 80% or more to get overall credit for that class. One thing that it will also give us, Mark, we'll know that it was at least accessed and that the individual tried to take the assessment so that they were, you know, they did this in earnest, but uh, they will be prompted to take the quiz again. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. Uh, Kathy asks, does PaymentWorks clearly indicate the different contacts needed in PaymentWorks for large vendors who have different emails for vendor onboarding, uh, sales, et cetera? I'm not sure who's on here, but I can take a stab. But Kathy, I'll, I'm gonna double check and come back with an answer also. But PaymentWorks does have segregated spots for contact information and then an email address designed specifically for where a PO should be sent to. But with regards to your question, you're asking if it's broken up even more by contacts, I'll take that back and see if we can't get an answer to you shortly. Thank you, Janelle. Um, Marlo asks, and this is, this is a very interesting one, should new employees, those who start this month in October, continue to take Bruin by training or only wait and take Bruin by plus training? I'm sorry, Mark, can you please repeat the question? So we have an employee who starts this month um, that will be needing to use Bruin by. Um, should they should they take Bruin by training or should we just have them wait and just take Bruin by plus training? Quite honestly, that's why I wanted you to review it. Uh, that would be a question that they would need to ask their manager because my right. assumption is that, you know, we're we're still a few months out from go live. And so I would just encourage that individual to go back to their manager, see if their their support on Broom by is needed in this interim period, and then certainly uh, take the training to bridge over to Broom by Plus as we go into the new year. Thank you. Uh, Pedro, good morning. Uh, uh, you, you asked, has the email to vendors to set up or transfer to Broom by Plus been sent? Can we send a link or a website for them to do it? Some doctors are set up as vendors and we don't want them out of Broom by Plus as vendors. I can take that. Sure. So there has been communications sent pretty thoroughly and, and uh, repeatedly to all of our vendors to ensure that they are registered in payment works. Um, I know there's a lot of information around that on the Ascend website, but also on the procurement website, we have an active link that gives instructions on how they can make sure they're registered in payment works. Ah, where did it go? There was more. Uh, so there is a com communication on payment works, but there's also a part where you're asking vendors to set up to transfer to Broom by Plus. If that has nothing to do with payment works and that's my fault if I assume that, but if it has to do with their invoice process, we did send an email last week to vendors talking about how to now submit invoices come go live. 
So I hope one of those answers answered your question. <laughs> Um, thank you, Janelle. I appreciate it. Um, our center processes sponsorship requests as well. Can we be trained for how to process these as well? Sure. Join us with training. <laughs> there you go. Uh, another question. If we have part-time staff that cannot attend live training due to conflict in their work schedule, how will their training be accommodated? Mark, I would just ask that individual to send a note uh, to us. You know, we provided the ascend 2.0 email address and then we'll work with them one one as a follow up. But hopefully that's truly on an exception basis. If I'm assuming that if it is instructor led, that it's either the buyer courses or the center procurement courses and we'd have to work with them. But ideally, we get them into those you know, instructor led offerings. OK, thank you. Um, Sponsorship invoices and POs, these payments require more than just an invoice. How should the other approval requirements per person cost worksheet, transmittal letter be handled in order for UCLA travel accounting to pay? Great question, Stephanie, thank you. Okay, so we do have a new, if, if we're assuming I've got a couple of my colleagues in the room, and so we're assuming that these sponsorship invoices, POs are directly related to the catering and events, and if we're wrong, let us know. But we do have a form dedicated to this in Brew and Buy Plus. It will support the creation of a purchase order where we've worked really closely with travel accounting to incorporate everything that they need to satisfy those requirements in the form. So they've got hyperlinks to forms. We've built in um, all the questions that they need. So as that form goes through workflow, it will also go to travel accounting for final review and approval. And they'll be sure they have all this stuff that you need, like the per person cost worksheet that's built into the form itself in Broom by Plus. Um, and that, we can go through that in training. Thanks, Janelle. What should I do if I am unable to register and schedule to Bruin by Plus training? I already sent emails about it also. If I, you know, uh, Mark, I, you'd have to go directly back to our box again. Uh, we're trying to navigate those as they come in. Uh, all I could say is if that individual wants to just write me personally, they can. I'll just make sure that I connect back up with the team. Okay, thanks, Janelle. Uh, I'm Jennifer. sorry, thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> Too many J's. <laughs> Too many J's. Uh, Mariah, some of our vendors are small, paper-based, infrequent email. What do you do with email blast return as non-deliverable emails? We won't know how, when to help without being included in the email communication, timing and content. What is the best, what are the best next steps for that? I'm gonna say work with vendor management as they're working to get all these vendors onboarded. I know they're getting some of that. That's gonna be your first, first place to stop. Exactly. Um, question that we have, we've got just time for a couple more, but any questions that we have in here, we'll make sure they are answered and we will post them to the FAQs. But uh, will the campus buyers and preparers be notified when payment is processed on a PO? Yes. Within Broom by Plus, you can turn a notification on to receive uh, an email or an application notification anytime a payment has been processed against your PO. Okay, very good. Uh, also, and I think our, our last question here, Alexia, mm -hmm. will the H&I dashboard be replacing vendor self-service? Michael's trying to come off mute. <laughs> come on, Michael. <laughs> Tell me what you want me to say. <laughs> um, no, the answer no. is no. Yep. Okay. Some of us re are reviewers and backup preparers. Are we automatically enrolled for both trainings? If these roles are currently set up in DAX, uh, and you are, you know, we have many of our users that have multiple roles. Yes, they will be assigned to both trainings. Okay, very good. <clears throat> All right. Um, 
I think that concludes our question and answer session. If there are other questions that you have, I know we received from, uh, some through emails. We will be posting answers to those to the FAQ uh, section of our website. <clears throat> and I think uh, really appreciate everybody's help and partnership uh, you know, throughout the, uh, the, the winter, the summer, and the fall. We are really looking forward to our Bruin by launch. And, and again, just appreciate all the partnership uh, and collaboration with all of you. Um, we're looking forward to a really good go live. We hope you enjoy the training experience, those of you that are going through it. And we'll be back with you uh, early in the first quarter next year, and we'll give you some more updates as to where we're where we're headed with Oracle and uh, and just you know keep you informed as we go along the way. So really appreciate all your time today. I know we have a holiday season coming up here, not so far off. So we, we wish you all the best enjoying your holiday season. And uh, we look forward to talking to you all in the new year.